Hello, everyone. I'm Huai Cheng from University of Chicago. Today, I'm going to share our work, LibIO, on building efficient and portable cloud storage stack on ARM SOX. This is a joint work with Ming Zha Hao and my advisor, Hayati Gunawi from University of Chicago. In collaboration with Stanko Novakovic, Shriram Govindan, Dan Ports, Irin Zhang, Ricardo Bianchini, and Andrews Badam from Microsoft as well as Vapov Bogart from University of Michigan. Nowadays, we are more and more reliant on cloud storage. From the user's perspective, cloud storage can be viewed as a simple cloud virtual drive provided by major cloud providers such as Google Cloud, Azure, and AWS. Users only need to provision a virtual drive by specifying their requirements and simply run workloads on top without worrying about how they are achieved. At the back end, to make users happy, cloud providers need to implement a wide variety of storage services built on top of a large pool of storage devices, such as hard drives and modern SSDs. The storage services include data features such as reliability, security, and versioning guarantees, storage management features such as scalability and disaggregation, and of course, performance, cost efficiency, and many others. Today's cloud storage stack is very complex and imposes a very heavy operational cost. The servers in data centers provide a large array of x86 cores. In part, most of the CPUs are ran to the users and they are used to run various types of user workloads, such as NoSQL databases, analytics, and machine learning. Cloud providers charge users for the amount of computational resources used, proportional to the number of cores, thus making revenue. However, the storage stack takes away some precious cores. On the one hand, many storage services require a lot of CPU resources to run. On the other hand, Device management also incurs a lot of CPU overhead today. All these form the cloud storage tax. As a result, about 10 to 20% of data center access 86 cores are spent to run storage stack only. This is a heavy data center tax that cloud providers have to pay. Cloud providers have strong incentives to optimize cost efficiency for their storage infrastructure. Ideally, CPUs are better spent to run user workloads for revenue. With the rise of IO accelerators, an intuitive solution is to offload the storage services to cost-efficient coprocessors to release CPUs to users. So the first question to ask here is, which acceleration hardware should we use and how much cost efficiency it will bring. We observe that ARM coprocessors are being increasingly deployed in modern data centers. For example, Azure already deployed ARM servers for their internal workloads, and AWS is doing something similar. This motivates us to look into ARM coprocessor as the appropriate offloading engines. Cost efficiency perspective, the total cost of ownership of an ARM system on chip is only about $100 per year. But the saved whole CPU course could potentially make $2,000 each year by running them to the users. Overall, we can achieve roughly 20 times cost savings, and this could definitely increase cost efficiency of the cloud storage offering. So in this talk, we present LibIO, our next generation cloud storage stack that leverages ARM SOC as coprocessors. Traditionally, storage stack centers around CPUs to provide virtual storage to users and manage backend devices. At the high level, LibIO shares similar goals. LibIO allows storage services to portably run on ARM coprocessors and x86 with a uniform abstraction. LibIO helps providers cut the storage tax and improve utilization without sacrificing performance. Here is the outline of this talk. We have covered the motiva motiv motivation of the using ARM SOC to design LibIO, 
for the rest of the talk, we will briefly work through LibIO architectures and then discuss the challenges for LibIO to achieve portability and efficiency. Last, we will show some evaluation results and conclude. Let's see how LibIO works by going through a simple example. In LibIO, users run their own applications and guest OS of choice on the VM with no modifications required. For storage, the guest VM runs on the typical NVMe device interface exposed by LibIO as an NVMe queue pair. So the queue pair contains submission and completion queues for regular IO processing. Behind this NVMe interface, LibIO could implement the virtual drive either using a local drive or a remote drive or even the mixture of the two. But all these are transparent to the users. To process IOs from the VM, the SOC maps the queue pair from the VM to its own address space. If the user VM wants to utilize local SSDs, say, for throughput and latency reasons, the requests will be put into the NVMe queue pair mapped between LibIO runtime and the SSD devices. The shaded area represents the LibIO runtime running on the ARM SOC in user space. The runtime glues all the NVMe queue pairs and form end-to-end -end storage paths over either local or remote connections. The runtime enables us to run arbitrary storage services that are simply using NVMe interface. The services can either forward this I.O. to a local NVMe drive or a remote server as simple as a chain of NVMe commands. This design gives us some benefits. The first one is a service extensibility achieved by LibIO runtime running in user space. Hence, it allows cloud providers to easily manage, rapidly build, and communicate with a wide variety of complex storage services. Second, the runtime keeps polling on the mapped NVMe queue pairs to maintain low latency and high throughput for efficiency. The LibIO runtime doesn't reside in the OS, hence all data transfers can bypass the OS level. Third, VMs can obtain a rich set of block-oriented services behind virtual NVMe interface, such as enabling service virtualization and composability. For example, IOs from different VMs might have different priorities, and a priority scheduling service will decide when an I.O. will be processed and after that, send the I.O.s to the device. With another service feature, such as reliability guarantees, the I.O.s will be further processed via replication service and finally sent to a different backend device, either local or remote ones. Moreover, the above benefits can be extended to a disaggregated setup. If the user stores data in the remote SSD or services, the client runtime simply forwards the I/O request to the server runtime via TCP, RDMA, or REST API through the NIC. The server-side libIO runtime prepares the incoming command and data by polling on the queues connected to the client side. It then invokes the server-side storage function that also run in the user level within the SOC. The server-side service can then forward the IOs to one or more NVMe drives or remote services. I hope you have some initial understanding on what LibIO is about and in general how it works by now. When building LibIO, we face several challenges to satisfy data center deployment requirements. In particular, how can we achieve portable portability and bare metal performance? Let's go through these challenges one by one. Let's talk about portability first. The server configurations in modern data centers are never uniform. Different server generations have different capabilities. For example, for a first generation of server, it might only come with x86 CPU, regular NIC, and an SSD. And then later, the server might get upgraded with an RMA NIC. And then, more recently, the server 
will be deployed on an ARM SOC. But the newer server generations must be able to provide services to VMs running on older servers and vice versa. So with portability, we try to avoid fragmenting the fleet into silos defined by the hardware capabilities and specific software optimizations. Thus, LibIO could serve as a uniform software environment which can support running on different hardware setups. In LibIO, the storage software stack is portable to run on x86 or in the SOC whenever available, thus an offload-ready design. The user VMs are agnostic to what is implementing the virtual drive. To support LibIO run on x86, we design a SOC-like VM such that the overall design remains the same as in ARM SOC. We augment the SOC VM with global resource visibility and it sees the same abstraction as ARM SOC. With LibIO's portability design, we keep servers fungible regardless of their acceleration or hardware offloading capabilities. That is, we treat accelerators as opportunities rather than necessities. For example, we could access backend storage devices through different type of protocols via PCIe for local access, or RDMA, TCP, and REST API for remote storage access. With the virtual NVMe abstraction, LibIO is also able to work with different type of devices, whether it is a slow hard disk drives or SATA-based SSDs or emerging software-defined flash. Moreover, portability also helps provisioning. So if the SOC is crowded, we could ask for help from the SOC VM. Second, it's important to achieve bare metal performance. The problem here is that in existing ARM SOC designs, ARM cores are hidden behind either the NIC controller or storage interface. Thus, ARM to x86 communication must be routed through the NIC or storage control block and not efficient. Furthermore, there are many software hardware components involved in the data pass. Hence, we need to minimize that copying. While there is only one copy of the original data, different hardware components and software layers need to access the data in their own address spaces. To minimize data copies, we designed a uniform, unified address space which incorporates x86, ARM, SSDs, and NICs, supported by memory mapping across several address spaces via transparent address translation support. However, easy offloading of service to the SOC while maintaining performance cannot be easily achieved without hardware support. Thus, we define and design a set of hardware properties to make ARM to peripheral per communication as efficient as x86 to peripherals. First, ARM SOC needs to have a native DMA engine to allow ARM directly talk to the host DRAM and must allow the user space libio runtime to access the DMA engines to reach the locations of all the NVMe queue pairs mapped between the on x86 user VM, RDMA NIC, SSDs, and in SOC services. Second, the InSoc LibIO runtime must have access to an IOMMU coherent with the host in order to perform page table work for the address translation of VM submitted IOs. Third, the unsock DRAM must be visible by the RDMA NIC and SSDs for zero copy peer to peer DMA. For this, the SOC must expose its DRAM space as a PCI bar to the x86 host. The bar will then be mapped as part of the host physical address space by the host OS. With this capability, when hardware components such as NIC, SSD, x86, and the SOC will read write data via the host address space without routing data back and forth. We first evaluate LibIO's software overhead using a SOC VM setup. On top of a Linux machine, 
We run libio stack on a sock-like VM and expose a virtual NVMe drive to another user VM backed by a data center SSD. The user VM runs regular Fi IO benchmarks on top of the virtual NVMe drive. We run two different types of workloads, random reads and random reads mixed with random writes. Here, X axis represents the number of IO threads being used and Y represents performance numbers in millions of IOs per second. The blue bars represent the bare metal performance numbers on a device pass-through model. With libio, we observe that it is able to achieve similar scalability with increasing number of threads at minimal IO ops drops. On the right-hand side, we show the latency CDFs. And similarly, libio stack is able to achieve close to bare metal latencies. Overall, libio software stack imposes a very low overhead at only 2 to 5%. Furthermore, we run a similar experiment, but this time with libio runtime running on the ARM storage. We run FIO and YCSB workloads and show the throughput. Due to current ARM SOC design inefficiencies, we see a up to 30% throughput drop, up, drop. However, we believe that the performance will significantly improve with future ARM SOC designs when all necessary hardware features are achieved. Due to time limitation, we couldn't go through all the design aspects of libio, but we do encourage you to read our paper to learn more details. Specifically, we provide more details on libio IO pass and address translation support, VM in SOC enhancements, libio's threat model, support for NVMe over different protocols, and more evaluation results. So, in summary, libio is an end-to-end offload-ready cloud storage stack design which achieves portability, extensibility, efficiency, and many other deployment features. It brings 20 times cost savings at only about 2-5% to software overhead. We also suggest to SOC vendors with several hardware properties to bridge the performance gap between ARM and x86. With that, I conclude this talk. Thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions.